Welcome to Holistic Human Performance Podcast. My name is Jenna Bradshaw, where we talk all things holistic health, wellness, spirituality, fitness, meditation, energetics, and so much more to help you become the healthiest version of yourself. Let's dive in. This is not medical advice. This is simply to help you on your journey through health, fitness, and wellness. I hope this helps. You can complement this with anything that you are doing currently in your life. Enjoy. Have you ever felt absolutely hopeless when it comes to your health, body pain, chronic disease, mental and emotional distress, and your stress management? Yeah, I've been there too. And after years of my own health and healing journey, learning all of these different holistic healing modalities and tools, I've finally come to a point in life where I have absolutely never felt better and I want to teach you those tools. And that's why I've created the Magnetic Mobility Meditation Program designed specifically to tap into your body, listen to the inner wisdom it's trying to share with you, and really connect your mind, body, and soul so that you can be the healthiest, happiest version of yourself and be able to thrive in your life and truly learn about your own energy, what you need, what your non-negotiables are as I combine this body-based practice to help you you reclaim your health and thrive in your life. And did I mention that you get a five-day free trial to the Holistic Human Performance Wellness Center where you can access all these different programs, on-demand videos, meditations, breath work, movement, exercise, nutrition coaching, all to help you biohack your life, enhance your health and well-being, and to help you have these tools that you can put in your toolbox and you can utilize them whenever, wherever you need. Go get your five-day free trial at www.holistichumanperformance.co backslash academy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Holistic Human Performance Podcast. I'm your host, Jenna Bradshaw, and today we have a very special guest guest with us. We have Dr. Mike. He is a best-selling author, medical director, um, PhD in holistic nutrition, expert in functional medicine, fitness, nutrition, regenerative medicine, expert biohacker, and a TEDx speaker and motivational speaker. So I am so excited to dive in today um, on the topic of really like how do we optimize our health and our well-being um, to really live a quality life and do the things we want because it is our birthright. So welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Jenna. Yes. So let's start out with, because I know you have a background in athletics and I absolutely love that. Why don't you kind of tell us that journey um, through and swimming, I believe, was your sport, correct? Um, tell us tell us about that experience of being an athlete and being at that level of, you know, optimization of being the best of the best and um, kind of how it brought you into what you do today. Yeah, it certainly brought me here to sports. Um, it all started when I was about eight years old. Um, I grew up in Belgium, hence the accent. But... <laughs> uh, but um, You know, I would say I was kind of the fastest runner in the class. I was on the basketball team, soccer team, but I always lost in swimming because a good friend of mine was, you know, part of the local swim team. And I don't really remember, but my mother tells me that uh, I was basically uh, upset that I lost. And so my solution was to join the local swim team also. And that's where (laughs) I found my passion for swimming. But I still joke about it that it's actually my worst sport, right? Um, but fast forward, yeah, I was a competitive swimmer for a long time till age 24 in Belgium, um, Belgium national records and titles, those types of things. But then I took a, you know, probably a 22 year break and I started swimming again, competing at age 46. Wow. Uh, Yes. And then I swam a world record in 2019 at age 48. I'm 52 now. 
So, but what happened is, is um, basically I really needed to compensate for, you know, at age 48, you don't have that endurance anymore, right? right? So you need to do other things in order to compete because I'm not one of those that likes to swim two hours every day. I actually train only three times 75 minutes per week, which is very, very little for a competitive swimmer. But I wanted to compensating with biohacking, meaning upgrading that body, that mind, uh, and objectively reversing my biological age. So I believe that yes, I was competing at the time in the 45 plus, but I believe my body was maybe 30, 35 years older because that's what I worked on is objectively reversing that biological age. Uh, but it's certainly the swimming that uh, kind of got me interested in athletic performance, getting the edge, taking that unfair advantage and see what we can do to always push the limits. And so I owned some anti-aging clinics and from anti-aging, it went into regenerative medicine, which was the whole stem cell type of thing. I was CEO of a stem cell clinic until COVID hit. And mm. then after COVID, we had to close the doors because we were non-essential. But right. that's when I really started searching again, okay, what is it that I really want to do? And that's when I started picking up my uh, speaking business again. I just spoke as a keynote opener at the biohacking Congress in Miami. Um, very cool. I'm, I'm doing a lot of mentoring, helping people, you know, with their body or their mind or their life. So I have a few cancer patients, lupus, rheumatoid patients, and I work with top athletes and anything in between yeah. uh, to get to that next level or to overcome a disease. Mm. Okay. So let's talk about biohacking. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about, you know, what is biohacking? And, and again, why is it important for people to know this information? Yeah. Well, biohacking is an amorphous term. It has many definitions, but for me, it's simply upgrading the body, the mind, and life. Mm. And from a health point of view, it's objectively reversing that biological age because, you know, chronological age doesn't really mean anything, yeah. right? Some people are uh, 60, 65, and they're in, in bad shape, uh, and they're about to die, and other people are 90, and they're doing very well, right? So chronolo chrono chronological age, we can't change, but we can't change our lifespan or our health span. And I believe, truly believe, I witnessed it too, that today, not just the elite, but the average person, all your listeners, if we implement these biohacking strategies and tips, then I believe we all can easily become 100 years chronologically, but be able to do the things that a 40-year-old does. Mm -hmm. And that's the key, right? It's it's that quality of life. And I believe that's possible without, because people think, oh, you probably need to buy all this expensive technology. No. Uh, in my book, I talk about the seven foundational biohacks, uh, which everybody can start implementing without investing any money, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's biohacking. What are, what are, let's talk about some things that people can do to integrate into their lives because biohacking, I agree, is it's so simple. It, it's almost like dumbfounding how easy it is. The so, what are some things? We are, yes, the foundations are. So, I'll talk about the seven foundations because, yeah. yes, we can invest in expensive equipment, but people don't realize that equipment won't give you the benefits if your foundations are not in place. So, we got Correct. a foundation in place anyway. So, my number one would be oxygen or breath work, right? So, we all breathe in oxygen 21% from the air, but we need to get more fresh oxygen. Uh, in versus recirculated air. So we got to spend more time outdoors. Um, but, you know, we all get the same amount of oxygen, but 99.5% of us don't know how to breathe correctly. And right. so we got this thing when we were born called the nose. <laughs> and, that's, and that's designed to breathe. Uh, it's not for your allergies. It's not to sneeze. It's to breathe. The mouth is designed to talk and to eat. The yep. nose to breathe. So a normal breath, which most people would be surprised to hear, is five counts in through the nose uh, and six counts out through the nose. So it's all in and out through the nose. Now, the reason that is because the nose is much smaller, so it would drive that oxygen much deeper into the lungs, into the tissues and the cells. And also it captures the nitric oxide, which sits right here in this cavity, and the nitric oxide and dilates and gets it deeper into the tissues. Um, mm. <clears throat> now, why do I think this is one of the top biohacks is learning to breathe properly is because if we breathe in five counts and out six counts through the nose, then we only would take five and a half breaths per minute. Right mm. now, the average person breathes between 16, 22 times per minute. So it would increase your efficiency by at least 300%. Mm. 
Wow. So means oxygen, but oxygen also means what? Oxidation, oxidative stress, rusting, aging. You know, oxygen is aging. So we, we need to increase that efficiency of utilizing that oxygen. So breath work, I mean, it's for free, right? I mean- It's literally I, something we were born with. <laughs> Yes, but you got to learn to do it properly. And it right. takes a little bit of your time. Uh, you can go on YouTube and Google, uh, you know, videos. But I would suggest you download uh, the Breath Source or The Source, it's called now, uh, which is a, an app that you can download for free on your smart device. And all the Breath Masters of the world, the top Breath Masters are on that same app. So check it out and learn how to breathe properly. So that's number one. Learn to breathe. Learn to utilize that oxygen. But don't overdo it, right? So it's about a right. Number I have a two. question. I have yeah. a question before you go into number two. So okay. there's a whole trend now where people are talking about taping their mouths when they go to sleep. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? No, that would be a good uh, tool to force you to breathe through your nose. But of course, it's different for everybody because some people would get claustrophobic immediately and, and pull right. the tape back off. So it depends when it's appropriate to introduce that, if at all necessary. Mm. Um, and I just explained the normal breath. Uh, but there's many breath exercises and certain breaths have different um, goals or different purposes. Breath is is used to get into a meditative state. Breath is used to get in contact with the spiritual world. Breath is used to calm down and relax, going from sympathetic to parasympathetic. And that's all great. And you should dive into it. But first, learn how to breathe properly. Love and that. So at least in through the nose and maybe out through the mouth. And then yeah. You know, just keep practicing. And again, I think the breath source would be a good, or the source it's called now, they just changed it. It's mm. a good uh, app for free um, to start with. Oh, perfect. Okay, so number two. Number two, water, right? Yeah. Uh, oxygen, so water. Uh, of course, we all heard that we don't drink enough water. That's true. But even if you drink enough water, um, it's about hydration. And so there's many things that we did that we drink that do the opposite, that dehydrate us, like sodas and coffee and teas. So they dehydrate us. So even if you drink your normal amount of water, if you also drink those two coffees and this and that, you know, you're really not getting hydrated because you right. dehydrate at the same time. So you gotta find that balance. Um, and then uh <clears throat> You got to understand that we are a, what I call a plumbing system. We have a circulatory system. We have a lymphatic system, which is part of our immune system. And mm -hmm. so we are designed for things to move. Stagnation in our body means disease. Mm -hmm. right? And so think about a plumbing system. Water needs to go through it constantly to make things move. Mm -hmm. So we need to drink plenty of water. And then this water is hydrogenated water, which is another story. But I love how I, I had someone on talk about uh, I think it was last week. He came on to talk about hydrogen water and hydrogen. Yes. Very and cool. Now the inhalation is available. So that's even much more powerful than the water itself. But mm -hmm. uh, so water, enough water and you know, I mean, it's important. Clean uh, water too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Clean water. It depends on where you live. You got to make sure, of course, I got a purification system. You got to make sure all our toxins are out of there, right? So you got to filter your drinking water at least. Uh, if you can afford a whole house system, great. But otherwise, at least filter your drinking system and make sure locally you can find out what's in your local drink or water and then make sure that your filter filters those toxins uh, out of that water. Yes, you're correct. We're the only country besides New Zealand, I believe, that allows fluoride and all those types of things in our drinking water. Fluoride is a neurotoxin. No matter what, any dentist with a pamphlet of mm -hmm. says, they are rock. You can just Google it. It's a neurotoxin proven over and over again. And so there's no need for that in our drinking water. So, yes, we got to be careful. It's got to be clean water and it's got to be plenty of water. Mm, absolutely. Okay, number three. Number three, I would say movement, right? We just talked about hydration and a plumbing system. So we need to move too. If we don't move, everything becomes stagnant. Stagnation is disease, right? So, you know, I talk to people all the time. Oh, I go to the gym an hour to an hour and a half per day. That's great. That's great. Nothing wrong with that. But what do you do the rest of the day? Oh, I'm yeah. selling insurance. So now they're sitting at a desk in front of a computer for hours. So from a health point of view, no, this is not healthy, right? We need to move constantly during the day, whether it's just walking or taking dancing lessons or being outside or chasing the grandkids or the dogs. It doesn't matter. But we need to move. Now, if you are in a, in a job that you can't get away from the desk, that's when technology may come in. A vibration plate, a mini trampoline, you know, those types of things, high frequency vibrations. 
Um, but movement is crucial. And so you don't have to play organized sports or you don't have to go to the gym to be healthy. It's about movement and keeping moving. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's what open. keeps the lymphatic system moving, everything. everything. So hydration and movement will get everything going and yeah. that prevents stagnation. Mm, mm, okay. Um, and then number four. Number four, the opposite of movement, rest, right? <laughs> so it's during our deep delta sleep that we do what? That we repair, regenerate, renew, uh, replenish, etc. But it's only during a deep delta sleep. So an, an easy analogy is a supermarket, right? Just imagine that the people that restock the shelves at night go on strike for one or two nights. There's no more supermarket. There's nothing to buy anymore, right? It's the same though with our body and we let it accumulate and get worse and worse because during the night, it's again where everything replenishes, restocks, repairs, ready mm -hmm. for the next day. So if we don't get into that deep delta sleep, we're in big trouble and it's accumulative. So a few tips. Uh, we obviously need to get into a power routine. We can talk about that later. But um, just to pick a few that are general, uh, number one, we cannot consume foods or eat or snack three, four, ideally five hours before we go to sleep because digestion takes several hours. And so if we eat close to when we go to sleep, then we can't get into that deep sleep because the body's still working. So right. it cannot repair if it's still, if, pub, if you know, if a supermarket's still open, you know, we can't restock. So that's number one. Number two, a lot of people, when they go to bed, they can't fall asleep because their mind's going crazy and they're, oh, I got to do this and I got to go tomorrow. I got to go that. I got to bring the kids here, this, this, this. And so we need to get into a routine where we don't do that anymore. And so part of my uh, evening routine is one minute visualization where I go through the next 24 hours step by step and I make the right decisions at each point of contact and it takes only one minute. So now when I go to bed, I don't have to worry about, oh, what am I going to say at the meeting? How am I going to go get there? How am I going to make this meeting on time or whatever it may be, right? So we need to figure out how we can get into a deep delta sleep. The only way for you to know that it's working is that when you feel up refreshed and ready to go. And most of us, it's not. Are not. Exactly. So we need to do something about that. So that's number four. Okay. Number five. Sunlight. Mm. Sunlight stimulates all biological, physiological, and nutritional processes in the body. Uh, the best proof is just look at animals around the equator in the Amazon. You know, we're looking about the big tigers, colorful creatures, vital creatures, strong creatures versus those that don't see light. Extreme example, a mole. <laughs> They're even blind, right? Yeah. So who do you want to be, right? The Bengal tiger or the mole? It's up to you. But <laughs> the difference is sunlight. So again... We become accustomed to spend most of our time indoors, which is a mistake. Now, sometimes we can't, but when 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 there's lunchtime, go eat outside. When it's evening, take your kids, go sit outside if it doesn't rain. Spend more time outside during the week and do outdoor activities. And then also start thinking about what am I putting on my body? Because mm. the light cannot be absorbed with our clothing. I'm not suggesting you should start walking around naked, but... <laughs> In your own yard, you at least can go in a bikini or small shorts, avoid yeah. long pants, take your shirt off, and those types of things because we really need to absorb that sunlight. We know, and most people now know, I, we knew you know, before, but COVID, everybody's talking about vitamin D, right? It's That deficiency causes so much trouble, and that sunlight and supplementation is not the same. I'm not saying not to do it, but it's not the same. So right. we need to get exposed to more sunlight. Again, if you're living in Norway or Iceland in the winter and it's 24-7 dark, that's when we have all the you know, whole body photobiomodulation devices and light therapies, et cetera. But for us that have access to sunlight, we got to go outside. And guess what? We can stack our biohacks. We can go outside, have the sunlight. We can breathe in fresh air. We can move. And if we smart and take our shoes off, we can start grounding at the same time, right? Discharging that negative energy into Mother Earth uh, by closing that loop with Mother Earth. So that's number five, sunlight. I mean... These things are no secret. Like everyone, it's it's all out there for everyone to do. It's just a matter of taking that action and doing it. And personally, and like you just said, big bang for your buck. Like you can do all of those things while being outside. And it doesn't, you know, mean it's going to take you hours or all day. Like you can get five, 10 minutes and just go outdoors and do this. That's awesome. Yes. So number six. 
Number six would be diet, right? Upgrading our nutrient intake and our nutrition because most people health is nutrition and there's a lot more to health. We already right. the first four, right? Or five. But um, I guess the best way to explain is because there's you can talk days about nutrition, right? But the best way I think is I believe that there's only one cause of all disease and it's called toxemia. Toxemia literally means toxins in the blood. But mm. in a little bit more detail, what it means is that on a daily basis, as part of our normal metabolism, we obviously produce waste and toxins. But in a healthy organism, those toxins are eliminated by what? The kidneys, the bowels, the skin, etc. So no harm is done. However, if we ingest or are exposed to far more toxins than the body possibly can eliminate, mm. then we have an accumulation of toxins in the body. And that's what's called toxemia. Now, mm. research shows that toxemia does two things. Number one, these excess toxins, they, they basically steal an electron from a healthy atom. And then that becomes unstable, which we call what? Free radicals. So that's our oxidative stress, our fr excess free radicals is caused. Uh, but even more and easier to understand is that we're now in a state of emergency because we can't keep up with elimination. So the body needs to start neutralizing and doing other types of things to compensate for that. And so in conventional medicine, we actually have a term for that. It's called systemic inflammation. And so now even conventional medicine agrees that over 90% of all disease, including cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. is directly related to the systemic inflammation. So... If we want to be bulletproof against any virus disease of the 21st century or any chronic disease or cancer, we need to keep toxemia in check. And theoretically, it's easy because what we need to do is we need to reduce the intake and exposure of toxins from what? Uh, from man-made foods, man-made drinks, from over-the-counter and prescription medication, from uh, toxic household products, cosmetic products, the thing that's, that we put in our hair and our skin, and from electromagnetic frequency and radiation, our Wi-Fi devices, our phones, our uh, you know lights, our smart appliances, all that kind of stuff. And we, so we, we cannot avoid it, but we need to do whatever we can to reduce this and mitigate it while simultaneously increasing the nutrients, the raw materials that we need to do what? Fight free radical damage, fight system, systemic inflammation and repair our DNA. And we don't have to be health freaks. If we simply can tip that balance, mm. we're in optimal health. Mm. And so when I have mentees or people I work with, that's exactly what we do. We're going to make sure we do this. And therefore, our body can repair, can heal. Our immune system is uh, optimal and modulated and um, nothing can, can take us down. Yeah, I agree with you. When I started implementing these like biohack um tools i mean i kind of grew up like this just with my family but um i don't even remember the last time that i got sick like it's been years honestly and even like when i did get covid it was like very minimal yeah so that's really important for people to understand it's like we do this because your body can like fight off everything <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's always like that, right? Because people yeah. say, oh, it's going around in school or the class or this or that. And and I remember this is decades ago. I'm, I'm picking up my young daughter at school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's all the mothers and here's the dad waiting, right? <laughs> but they were talking, oh, it's going around and this kid's sick and this kid's sick. So I, I, and I did it nicely, of course, but I said, you know, how many kids are in the classroom? And it was like, I'm just making this up. I don't remember, 22. Yeah. So how many are sick? You know, nine. Okay, the other kids, right? The other 13 kids, how come they're not sick? They were in that classroom too. So right. it's not the bug, it's not the virus, it's not that, it's not the germs, it's your internal environment. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it can kill that bacteria or not. If you look at animals in the wild, they don't get any of our diseases because they are grounding, they are having fresh air, they are only drinking water. Because many times I'll tell people, if you don't know the answer, just ask yourself, what do animals in the wild do? And regardless of your three opinions from your doctors, the animals in the wild are right. So that's mother nature. So you can always look at that, um, but it's your internal environment. And so, you know, when I'm in optimal health, you can put me in a room with, you know, many people with SARS and COVID and I wouldn't be afraid because it won't affect me, period. Right. And that's that's a key point, too. I think people because I see so many people and I'm sure the same with you with like health anxieties and like all these fears, which obviously plays a role in us, you know, getting sick in the first place. But 
you know, when you walk into a room and like someone's like, uh, you know, they have the sniffles or whatever, you know, I think the the key is to have confidence with your body and know that it's fighting for you. You can trust your body and the things that you're doing actually work. I mean, I I hands down can say this stuff works. I, I've implemented mm -hmm. it into my life. If you pro if you try to protect yourselves against microorganisms and pathogens, that's how you weaken your immune system, right? There's been a many longitudinal studies about kids growing up on a farm, playing in the dirt, yep. and in the city where mom washes their hands all the time and sprays everything. And yep. so we see how much healthier they are because they're immune against all that stuff. It's our natural immunity. And so it is kind of laughable. The only thing, <laughs> the only place, the only place where hand washing and those types of things would be, um, you know, uh, would be beneficial is the hospital, of course, right? Right. But otherwise, right. there's really no place for it. If you go, if you see people going to a supermarket and they wipe off the cart, it's laughable because while they're walking, while they're wiping off that cart, they don't realize that hundreds and hundreds of pathogens are going through their nose at that same time. We There's millions and millions of pathogens that we are exposed to every minute, every hour. And so just wiping something off is not going to change that at all. Right. But yeah, no, I completely agree with you. And then the things that people are using where it's just pure chemicals. So we're just kind of adding more fuel to the fire and it yes. it is laughable. It kind of makes no sense. So no. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's the fear is usually instilled obviously by the government and the pharma and, and they want us to be fearful so we become customers, right? But exactly. That's, that's a whole other ball game. <laughs> okay, so last but not least, number seven. Not least because it's probably the first one because I always start with them with my client's mindset. We need to upgrade our mindset. Mm -hmm. Our mind is not only the in control of our body, in control of health of disease, 100%, but it also is the blueprint to our future, to our success or our failure when we talk about business or realizing our goals and dreams, etc. So mindset becomes very important because not just for athletes, but even with my cancer patients that I work on, you know, when they get labeled, cancer and the doctor says you probably be dead in six months if you believe that guess what the doctor's gonna it be happens right. yeah so we really got to get rid of that wording those thoughts and all that and we got to really work on that and and instead of being held back by the past and by diagnosis and by labels and by failures we need to be pulled forward by the future which is i'm gonna beat this cancer i'm gonna see my grandkids go up and i'm gonna do this and this and this and this and really use techniques like visualization and gratitude journaling and manifestation and breath work and whatever whatever works for that person to really you know set that future because it's all about especially as adults we're held back by the future because we have those negative experiences which we label as failures instead of lessons right and so the the problem is as those become our limiting beliefs right because i believe that you know when we talk about body mind spirit i believe and i can't prove it but i believe that our spirit chooses our body for a very specific purpose and reason and then our mind is there to try to make sense of it uh, and allow us to live our purpose. So why does that not happen? Well, here's why that doesn't happen. Um, we get bombarded with information, right? Uh, apparently, one researcher says 14,000 messages per day. Now, a very, very small percentage only goes into the conscious awareness or the conscious mind. Because in order for us to process and store information, we need to actually pay attention, whether that's reading a book or listening to a podcast like this one or, or watching TV. That information only is processed and stored into our conscious mind. Everything else, which is the vast majority, is absorbed are put in our subconscious mind. So our subconscious awareness, which operates below our consciousness, so we're not aware of it, right? Our subconscious awareness uh, is where all the information is now. And it's also where all our potential is as a human being. And it's also where we could connect with the universe and all its resources, right? So so then what's our ego? <laughs> <laughs> our ego... Our ego uh, primarily operates in the conscious mind. Mm. Right? And our ego tries to protect our conscious mind from distress. But it's solely based on the information stored in the conscious mind. So ignoring the power and the amount of information and the potential of the subconscious mind is what's holding us back, right? 
So what we when I say we need to upgrade our mindset, what I really mean is that we need to get in control of all the faculties of our subconscious mind mm. and put that ego aside so that we really can get to our full potential. Because remember, Bob Proctor said, Love him. Faith and failure both, you know, depend on us believing in something that does that we can't see. Mm -hmm. And the choice is ours, right? Mm -hmm. So um when we when a belief, when we believe, so belief is basically a thought that we keep on thinking. That's a belief. And knowing that we can change it at any time. Because when when our beliefs match our desires, then our desires or dreams must come true, right? So we must truly believe 100% in our goals or dreams are overcoming that cancer or becoming a world champion or whatever it may be, right? Because if there's any doubt in your mind that you're going to accomplish, then the universe has two options, failure or success. Mm. If you have no doubt in your mind that you're going to accomplish this, that, or that, then the universe only has one option, a big win, right? And so that's the power of the mind. Whether you're a top athlete or whether you want to overcome cancer or anything in between, that mind's going to be key because all those biohacking technologies and tools that we talked about without the proper mindset will not work. I love that you just said that because I also believe that our soul comes in and chooses our body for a specific reason and whatever, you know, lessons we need to learn, et cetera, in this lifetime. And um, so I don't know if you knew this, but I'm a two-time cancer survivor. And so oh, when really? I'm, yeah. So when I'm, and you know, this is part of why, like I started my business, why I write books, et cetera, and why I think it's so important to give people this information so that they can have access to their own inner healing, their own inner wisdom, um, you know, rewire rewiring their subconscious mind to believe, you know, hey, I can beat this. And and to be honest, like I've I was an athlete also growing up. And I think that that played a huge role in me overcoming um, a lot of these health adversities. And, um, you know, when I see <clears throat> other cancer survivors or those who are actively going through cancer, I'm like, listen, your mindset is 99 percent of the battle. If yes. you believe what your doctor is telling you, you're going to take that on. And guess what? They're right. And you just gave your power away. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, I, I I love that you combine the two because that's like my goal and what I want others to learn. It's like you don't need to just do this or just do that. Like you can combine these things and create a lifestyle that is suitable to you and what you want to accomplish in life and optimize in your health and well-being, whether you want to become, you know, a world champion in swimmer, swimming or you want to go hiking, you want to be active enough to play with your grandkids. Like if you don't believe that, it's not going to happen. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, okay. Talk to, talk to me about, you know, these biohacking technologies, right? If you had to choose your top three, what would they be? My current top three biohacks, it's funny that you asked that because I that, that's something I was asked at the uh, Miami Expo too. But number one would be breath work. Okay. You know, what we talked about, you really need to get into breath work because it does a lot of many things, right? Not just the oxygen and increasing, uh, decreasing the oxidative stress by increasing the efficiency, but you, know, you can utilize breath work to get into that meditative state to upgrade that mindset that we just talked about. Breathwork is one of those tools that can address all of those things or go from sympathetic into parasympathetic. Parasympathetic, we're all stressed. And breathwork is a tool that within 30 seconds, you can go from sympathetic being in flight and fight to go back to, okay, let's let's calm down, let's stress. So breathwork has so many different applications that when you learn them, you really get a lot of control about you know, all those things that we talked about today. So certainly for the average person, you got to look into breath work. Number two, today, I think we need to make sure we all have an ample amount of NAD plus and NADPH in our body, mm. right? What is that? NAD plus is the fuel for our innate DNA repair system. So our DNA, DNA gets damaged by free radicals, systemic inflammation, electromagnetic frequencies, everything we talked about during our toxemia uh, session. And so, but our body has a system 
inside that can repair it. So the question is, why does that not work in most of us? Because it requires fuel and the fuel is NAD plus, right? So an NAD plus does more than that. It's of course DNA repair, but mitochondrial function and energy production. It can upregulate or downregulate your genes. So it is involved in gene expression. It's involved with living longer because it promotes our longevity proteins. And it's also very essential for the gut. We have 200 to 500 uh, species of bacteria, each of each one of them counting on NAD plus for survival. So mm. NAD plus is involved in all those you know, cycles and all those chemical reactions that occur in our body by the millions every second. So we need enough of that. So how do we do that? Well, number one, we could get a supplement of NAD plus or get NAD plus IVs, right? Mm -hmm. But we also can take precursors such as tryptophan in a lesser degree, niacin, mm -hmm. um, NMN and NR, which are basically precursors to uh, NAD plus. So we can do all those things. And then again, we got to make sure we don't use as much NAD plus either, which means again, back to mitigating the toxins, mitigating DNA damage. So we don't need to repair as much, right? right. So that's NAD plus. We need to have enough of that. And then NAD pH, which most people uh, have not heard about, but NAD pH is actually the battery of our cells. Uh, mm -hmm. If you will, it's like an electron reservoir. And everybody heard that, oh, we need antioxidants, like especially again during COVID, everybody kind of got educated a little bit at least. <laughs> Vitamin C and D and selenium and zinc and all those types of antioxidants, because what they do is they neutralize free radicals by donating that unstable atom and electrons. So this becomes stable again. But what most people don't know, when your vitamin C molecule does that, it's that that antioxidant now becomes oxidized and totally useless. Mm. So what if we had an electron reservoir, a battery, and, mm -hmm. it was, and we could continuously donate another electron to that same antioxidants and mm. another one and another one and another one? Could you see how exponentially we would really increase uh, the effectiveness of our, of our fight against oxidative stress if we just could keep on feeding that same molecule electrons? And that's what NAD pH does. It's an uh, electron reservoir. And the way that is fueled is by hydrogen. So hydrogen would have to be my third biohack, uh, hydrogen inhalation or hydrogen water. Uh, okay. Because now there's almost 2,500 scientific peer-reviewed published studies. Yeah. That shows that hydrogen has a positive effect on our entire biology and physiology. And now more and more studies are coming out on how it affects those specific labeled diseases uh, that we talk about. But uh, especially, I think the top three for hydrogen right now is anything to do with the brain because mm -hmm. hydrogen is our smallest molecule and lightest element. And uh, compared to the other antioxidants, which are charged and cannot cross the cell membrane and enter the cell, hydrogen is not charged and easily can cross the cell membrane. Mm. So hydrogen is the only antioxidant that can get inside the cell and fight oxidative stress and protect our DNA, RNA, mitochondria, proteins, etc. So think about that on a whole body level, right? Right, 75 trillion cells. But when we think about the brain, it easily, especially when we inhale it, we easily, it easily crosses the blood-brain barrier, gets right. inside the brain cells. So think about the effect on dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS, traumatic brain injury, stroke, and the list goes on, right? Uh, the other great effect that I've witnessed with uh, my clients is its effect on anything with the gut. Uh, whether it's Crohn's disease or irritable bowel or food intolerances or leaky gut syndrome, whatever the labels are again, right? Because when you go to a doctor with those digestive disorders and gut disorders, they usually put you on a diet which doesn't work. The reason that doesn't work is because your gut environment is in a state where the good bacteria cannot uh, colonize. Mm. So when you start drinking hydrogen H+, plus, it will get the micro voltage or the electrical potential of your gut back up to 300 or 400 millivolts, which is an environment suitable for the anaerobic bacteria, which are your good bacteria to colonize. And now suddenly those probiotics and those diets will work, right? Uh -huh. So I've seen hydrogen fix any gut problem in two to three weeks or faster with the inhalation even, right? That is so cool. Yeah. Wow. So now, right, it, it is also a trend. People are talking about this. There's a ton of different products. Do you have any recommendations of kind of like what people should do with hydrogen and yeah. 
you know, machine wise and how it's that a, works. It's a trend. And of course, you know, just like with anything else, there's kind of gadgets out there that kind of don't work and people get confused because hydrogen, we, I, me and you actually made a mistake because molecular hydrogen is the only hydrogen that works. You got hydrogen cations, you right. got hydrogen anions, you got ions, you got all kinds of different hydrogen. But what you really need is molecular hydrogen. That's where the studies are done on. And mm. so when you talk about these bottles that you buy for a few hundred dollars, that infuse your water with hydrogen. It does produce molecular hydrogen, but that uh, molecular hydrogen is unstable. That's why they tell you to drink it immediately. So they really don't know how much they got. And that's why they tell you to drink it immediately because that molecular hydrogen is produced as a byproduct of changing the pH of that water, right? Mm. So it's a way of producing it, but it's unstable. So there are companies that have stable uh, molecular hydrogen or can produce that. And you can put that in your fridge for one or two weeks and you still have all the stable molecular hydrogen. But then now lately or uh, you know, recently, uh, we have inhalation systems. And the first ones that came on the market in the US last year, almost two years ago, they were very expensive, 14,000, 20,000. Yeah. Systems, I have one here, I'm actually looking at it, uh, on the markets that are affordable and, and my unit produces water if I want to, but also does the inhalation. Right? Ah, okay. The reason, the reason why inhalation in many instances is better, because if I if I inhale, uh, and it's not the mask, it's just the two things up the nose, and I can do my work. I yeah. can do whatever. I could have had it on if we were talking. About <laughs> um, but let's say I do an hour, and it all based it, it it's all based on the output too. But generally speaking, let's say if I go an hour inhalation, I probably would have to drink 100 bottles of hydrogen water to get the same effect. Oh, wow. See, so that's kind of the difference. Now, water has its place. You got to drink it anyway, so it might as well be hydrogen water. But let's, let's think back about our gut problem. I mm -hmm. believe if we drink water, it comes in direct contact with the gut. That may be beneficial over the inhalation, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, I combine them. I mean, the machine has both. Um, so I, I just combine them. Mm, yeah, why not? <laughs> That's why not? awesome. Very cool. And you're just like a wealth full of knowledge. This is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. So as we wrap up, are there any words of wisdom you would like to leave the listeners? Um, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, even today in just this, this short podcast, and I know you, you interview guests all the time, there's a lot of information. People get overwhelmed and they say, oh, yes, more sunlight. Oh, yes, enough water but they don't take action, right? And so what I help people do, <clears throat> and they can do it themselves, but many times we need that coach, we need that accountability, right? So they need right. you or me or anybody else. But what I do is I, I, I look at all those aspects and we figure out what works for them, right? Because for me, breath work, Breath work works to get in a meditative state. For other people, they can meditate. I fail at meditation, right? So we got to see what works for you and create what I call a power routine, which is a routine, which has the same elements for everybody, but it's customized, a routine that you can count on that works for you. And it's a daily routine. Like you said, it doesn't have to be two hours, could be 10 minutes in the morning, 10 in the evening, but it's a daily routine that you can count on. A routine that inspires you, that gives you energy, that drives your purpose, and that gives you, that gets you one little step closer each and every day, an incremental step to your goals, to your dreams, to overcoming your disease, to be healthier, whatever it may be. And therefore, it also gives you fulfillment or brings you fulfillment on a daily basis. So there's so much information out there. And so we usually go through all these steps we went through today and more, but then also by trial and error, see what that person responds to or what works for them to get the result. And then we take those elements and put them in a power routine. Because if you don't do it daily, again, you're not going to get the results. It's got to be uh, become a habit, something that you do on a daily basis. Just a little bit every day gives you a huge result in a year versus doing a lot one day and then nothing for a month is not going to get you anywhere. Right? Mm, love that. Completely agree with you. So, Dr. Mike, where can people find you? Yeah, I'm not the biggest social media guy because it gives us a dopamine overload, right? Yeah. But uh, my website is probably the best place to go. It's biohackingunlimited.com. All my books are there. Uh, we have a VIP retreat coming up in Costa Rica in August. 
Uh, my mentorship programs are there, so you can check those out if you think I could help you out. You can schedule a 20-minute free call with me. That doesn't cost anything, so you can just talk to me and see if there's anything that I can do to help you. And then uh, currently we have the Limitless Lab going on, which is a 12-week uh, virtual, so it doesn't matter where you are, training where we implement a lot of the steps that we talked about today and a lot more. So you can go to that same website, click on Limitless Lab, get the details. And uh, in a few weeks, there's a new one starting, but we always kind of repeat a 12-week series mm. where we help people overcome their disease or be the best version of themselves by going to what I call my P5 formula, uh, which is we, we work on purpose. Then we set a plan. Then we talk about how to be present in the moment and, and, and produce and be in the zone on demand. P number four is the power of upgrading the body and the mind. So that's what we talked about today. That's step number four. And step number five is that we take all that and put it in a power routine and we customize that. So it's a 12-week program where we help you do what we talked about today. Amazing. Thank you. Well, and yeah. And then I'll link all of his information in the show notes, guys. Um, I highly recommend to check out Dr. Mike's work. It is phenomenal what he's accomplished in this life. And I am so thrilled and thankful that you came on and we were able to have this conversation. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for your time because it's not just me. You're, you know, you're helping spreading the work and it's your time and your efforts. So this is teamwork. Thank you. Absolutely. Here for teamwork. So guys, if you like this episode, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.